following announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. Y'all, it's the Joker's Galley right here on the Fago Lovers Network. Another episode of Five Feast coming at you today. Today we're ranking the top five non-Joker cards of all time. Recently we ranked the Joker cards 1 through 12 before Yum Yum dropped. You can peep that out, peep that on this very Fago Lovers Network channel. But before we get into that, introduce the host for today, Mike Sears, the host of Speak Your Clout and also UFCD. Let the boys dominate. Speak your clout, Coons Clout Gallery. You know what it is. And right below me, you got the Larry King of the Underground, Mr. Luke the Goon. Represent Trife Life as always. You didn't show you didn't show your forearm while I was introducing you, so yeah, I didn't say it. I, well, there you go, there you go. <laughs> Represent Trife Life, as yeah. always, because it's tatted on his fucking arm. <laughs> you guys, you guys didn't know. This episode is pre-recorded. So yep. The chat is there for you guys to talk amongst yourself, say what's going on, and if you didn't know that, say no to drugs, kids. They're toxic for your health. <laughs> I don't know what that motherfucker talking about. <laughs> and then joining us today, we got a special guest to rank the top five non-Joker cards of all time. You might know him from Picks or It Didn't Happen. Be Jew Bag joining us right here on Five piece. What's up? Hashtag something like a professional. We up in this motherfucker. Hell yeah. I think uh Jews when it came up with this fucking top five. So Ooh. and it, it was, was pretty good. I, it was it was a trip. Luke sent me a message while I was taking a shit and he was like, would you ever want to do this? And I was like, Yeah. He said, You got an idea? And I, I literally just popped it off the top of my head. I didn't even know that you guys were doing a Joker card series. Yo, we had all the uh, juggalos that checked out checked out the shows or checked out any of the social medias all vote on the Joker cards and then ranked them via tallying the points. It was pretty it was pretty fun to sit there and go through. We were all really pissed off that uh, Carnival Carnage got the eight spot. <laughs> Damn, that is very that is, that is kind of low for that. So much so that uh, Luke switched from his normal gear into total Carnival <laughs> Carnage gear <laughs> in protest. So funny, yo. <laughs> he's like. He's like I still got the jersey. I still got the jersey hand up right there, so all y'all can see Carnival Carnage, bro. He still reminded you that you ranked it too low. <laughs> but like yeah, I said, you, we're, you you offended the goon straight up. Offended everybody on the panel. Uh, Rome Bone was with us for that one. He was pissed off just like me and Mike were. So all of us yeah. were pretty pissed off at that. But talking about uh, non-Joker cards today, first thing I think about when I'm talking non-Joker cards is probably Sideshow EPs because those were the earliest things available whenever I first jumped on. I started getting the Sideshow EPs based on how well I liked the other albums. So I liked the fuck out of riddle box so i figured tunnel of love was probably pretty good because i had the fucking little riddle box logo on it and shit because i didn't have no internet or anybody to tell me what was good or anything i just said you know put it two and two together and fucking came up with four that if i liked riddle box i'd probably like tunnel of love got it and liked it what do you think of mike whenever you think of uh non-joker cards i think it decides to piece as well man because you know they were a detroit thing when they blew up around here like around 97 so i didn't get them till 98 on the reissues on uh island, you know? And it's well, spoiler alert, it's like their best shit to me. To the side show fees. that's not Joker cards, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, real. Yeah. So I'm yeah, not a big, I'm not a big fan of Tempest and shit like that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right, go, I don't go think ahead, that's my bad. secret. I think I think we talked about that before. Yeah, that's yeah. not a secret that Mike doesn't like those albums. No. Uh <laughs> yeah, I mean it's same for me. The sideshow EPs always come up. Um because, I mean, I I was down, like, I became down, like, around when Tunnel of Love dropped. It would have been around that time. I don't know. Yeah. But it was, like, around when Tunnel of Love dropped. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the Sideshow EPs were always fresh. Bizarre Bizarre obviously always comes to mind, especially because those are full-length albums. So Bizarre Bizarre absolutely always comes to mind. Uh, yeah, you know, and then I think of The Calm and The Tempest and shit like that. Not, I don't really like those albums, but those come to mind. Yeah. 
about Juju? I always, I always looked at most of those albums you guys mentioned and certain other ones that I'm not going to name because they're part of my list. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I see them as when they were trying to be very experimental. And, he, and even though it wasn't per se part of the Joker card story, it was still just fantastic fucking music. Absolutely. I, I, think think Jay, the- I think Jay talked about that on one of the Patreons, how like the Sideshow EPs gave them the chance to kind of experiment a little bit with stuff. Yeah, it kind of loosens the grass. You don't have to kind of fit it into a theory of a Joker card or anything. And you can try new shit because it's only six songs or whatever. It's not like you're putting a year into this EP project and if people don't like it, you're losing so much money on how much you paid for. I think another reason that people really look at those Sideshow EPs so dearly is a lot of people would – like like Luke was talking about, he jumped on during the riddle box there, and then the probably the first thing that came out while he was the juggalo was Tunnel of Love and shit like that. So I think a lot of people kind of almost hold that hold those uh sideshow EPs pretty dear to their heart because they jumped on in a certain Joker card era. But in between that Joker card they jumped on to the next one, that sideshow EP always came out. It's his first release they always remember, and that shit my number one on this list is because of that, having those memories of it being the first release after I got down. So I think that's another reason that the such OEPs get held so high when, in a lot of Juggalos accounts, but talking about all the love for the sideshow EPs, I'll get into my five spot. It's not a uh, sideshow EP. It's a forgotten freshness. It'll be forgotten freshness. Volume three. forgotten freshness is those early ones man those were like a, getting a free icp album in the middle of a joker card they were so good they were full length lps they were yep. just as good almost just as good as a joker card and they just threw it threw it at you it was just sitting around and i think that one really stands out confessions is one of my favorite icp tracks of all time i heard it first on uh volume three it has uh it has uh posse on verner which is fucking super dope that was the getting the get in the uh, car with the homies, burn a few blunts and listen to song cartoon mm-hmm. nightmares. Uh, it had the, disc, had the disc track, the Eminem and had the uh, WCW theme, just so much freshness on it, man. It was like, you got an LP just free out of nowhere that they just had sitting around. So I'll put that at my five spot. Forgotten freshness, volume three. Look at them. All the wicked masses. That's why I'm down with the clowns. So the ashes. <laughs> Yo, hard shit. All right, number five for me. We're going to 1994. It's the it's the companion of the Ringmaster. Terror Wheel. I think you should come up here.
Ooh, shit. A lot of shit, dog. Like, first appearance of the dead body man would land on Riddle Box later on. Let's get some frantic, man. Banger. The smog. My favorite song in here, Out. You know, Jay goes to the store to get his little brother some food or whatever. Or this is some fucking zombies. Just amazing story time from Jay on that one. I stuck with my wang. You know, two dose to man right there. Amy's in the attic, of course, dog. Come yeah. on, fucking masterpiece. Of Classic. This is just as good as, like, Joker card shit. Joker card material, and it's a fucking classic. So my number five is the Terror Wheel. Love it. Hell yeah. Yeah, Terror Wheel. Amy's in the attic is a fucking classic. That's another kind of, like, uh, five-piece five piece, uh, favorite there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's, I know Ooh. it showed up on my list quite a few times. And it doesn't get the credit is due because a lot of people think of Dead Body Man as a riddle box track. Yep. Yeah. And and first time you heard Dead Body Man was fucking Terror Wheel. So much so that went uh, talk going back to a uh, few episodes when we were doing the uh, Riddle Box episode, we were wondering if uh, one of the songs on Riddle Box was the first time that Juggalo was said. But no, I remembered that a Dead Body Man. I forgot Dead Body Man was on Terror Wheel. He says Juggalo and fucking Dead Body Man. So it was actually Terror Wheel the first yeah. time he said it. And it was Dead Body Man. And so much so to prove my point that people don't think of Dead Body Man as a Terror Wheel track. None of us thought of Dead Body yeah. Man as a, as a Terror Wheel track when we were sitting there discussing it. <laughs> yep. And that's their, arguably arguably their biggest hit ever. And most people think of it as off of Riddle Box, but nope, it came off fucking Terror Wheel. Yes, yes sir. Yeah. All right, my number five is, uh, I guess, a couple albums that we decided to join into one. Like Voltron. Yeah, uh, Bizarre Bizarre. Albums fucking came out. I went straight to Best Buy, picked it up, and that intro on I think it's Eyes with the uh, Escape from New York fucking soundtrack in the background, and he's talking about clowns coming up from the ground and shit. Uh-huh. And, and there's like the songs that are on those two albums like are fucking fire. Like Let's Go All the Way, Mr. Happy, uh, Cherry Pie, Still Stabbing, We Gives No Fuck, Pendulum's Promise, Crystal Ball. Pendulous Promise might be the bleakest fucking song that was ever written by them. <laughs> but yeah, those albums are stacked. I wish that like they had more. This is gonna sound funny, but I wish back then they had more contractual obligations so that they would have made they would have made more records in that era. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that we would have got more music back then with like Jay's voice sounding the way that it did and that kind of attitude they had back then because the shit they did back then was fucking on another level. And talk about how all these songs are great, and it was just basically filler to get out of their contract with Island because yeah. they didn't want to put the sixth out on Island. So it was just something they put together quickly to get out of their contract. And there's probably 20 Juggalo classics on that those two fucking albums. It's hard to find a bad song yeah. if That's there facts. is one. My number five, I am actually going to go with a Tunnel of Love. Stop.
sacks in Super Bowls and fucking cotton uh, cotton candy. So you get that whimsical shit right there. And then you've got Prom Queen, which is at the end, which Jay himself has said is he believes it's the darkest shit he's ever written. Uh, and and uh, it, it's just... And you know what? If you were unlucky enough to not know that Shaggy was going to hang Wang, there's there's that memory too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll go ahead and jump in because it's at my four spot, Tunnel of Love. Oh, and shit. When uh, every, you, every, I agree with everything you said right there. And then when I get out, I always dug that fucking song, oh, too. Oh, fuck yeah. The, I actually forgot about that for a second. My fault. The, uh, the uh, where, Where's My Beef shirt is history. But so what? I'm going to sport mine like a G. I always love my ass off of that shit because I remember the Where's the Beef fucking uh, commercial being fucking nationwide when I was like two years old and blowing up. This is a random ass fucking reference in 1996. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just shit like that always always like sticks with you, the shit that connects to you. And uh, – all, all those songs were fucking great. Like I said, I bought it because uh, I liked everything that was on Riddle Box, and they had that voice still. They still had that production style and the voice and everything, and that's my favorite era of the clowns, so I got to put it on my list. I'll put that one at my four spot, so I figured I'd jump in and tag team it with the uh, number five of your choice. That's dope. That's yeah. Number five for me, we're going to 1993, the companion to Carnival of Congress. Number, number four. four. Oh, Four, like the like like the <laughs> horseman, bro. <laughs> Woo! Uh, Beverly kills. I say, man, old school Detroit scrub shit. Love this. 17 Dead is just fucking incredible. Yeah. The Stalker. Yep. You know, the whole fucking EP. Chop Chop with Isham. I fucking love that. Isham body uh-huh. that shit. Joke Your Mind. Absolute classic. You know, got that uh, Beverly Kills 9 or 2 on. Mm-hmm. Dylan. I think it's Dylan with his fucking face Dylan. slice. Dylan. Trying to find Dylan. Find Dylan. <laughs> classic, man. Just uh, incredible shit, man. Beverly Kills, my number four. Hell yeah. I like the evolution you've seen from Carnival of Carnage to that album. Like they yeah. grew a lot in that little amount of time right there. If if you listen to Carnival Carnage, you listen to that. Especially Shaggy, man. His voice was it that's my favorite era of Shag's like just crazy voice where he's just yelling shit like in the high. In the high, in the high. <laughs> like how's it that sounds like a fifty year old smoker's voice. How was Shaggy doing that shit when he was like seventeen? <laughs> Hell yeah. And I, think, kills I, think, shit. I think Jay even mentioned on one of the Patreons, like how we were saying about how they like an experiment with the EPs, that like that was kind of an experiment because like Beverly Hills 90210, like who's gonna know about that in like like 50 years from now? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So at that time it kind of maybe dated it a little bit, but man, it still fucking holds up to time. Yeah. In my opinion. Gotta be Greasy's favorite album ever. <laughs> yeah. Greasy. 
Greasy's in the motherfucking high. That flow, his flow, on fucking in the high is fucking fire. It was written hey. by, by Violent J, but it was fucking fire. He, he performed, performed it, it fucking well. dopely. Yeah, he did. It's hard, man. All right, my number four is, uh, I guess you could call it another double album, so I'm kind of cheating, is uh, Forgotten Freshness Volume 1 and 2. The second little piggy, his house is made of brick, and this little piggy is a motherfucking dick. He lays down his rules and reads to your rights in that funny looking car with the little blinking lights. I drive a Volkswagen bug, 17 deep, packed full of juggalos, lights out, and we creep to the piggy station and we blow his lungs out his uniform Now the air for soup Like Starsky and Hutch But it's only two of them The rest are off the lunch They call up Dunkin' Donuts To gather up the rest Twenty-five piggies With their bulletproof vests We lead them on a chase They bustin' off rounds But now they all fuck Cause we at the carny grounds And they gettin' swallowed By the very own greed Dark carnival and wicked clowns Cause we need Yeah, this is another one that's just like it's just crazy man like they put all their fucking like banger ass singles on this shit like fat sweaty betty fucking a lot of hollow wicked songs around here santa's the fat bitch which i sing year round um, <laughs> <laughs> the shaggy singles like clown love uh it's just fucking ridiculous bro like i fucking love both those records man or i mean it's however you want to say it volume one volume two Graveyard, Graveyard, which is one of my all-time favorite ICP oh, songs. Man. That song is bananas. They performed that at the gathering this year. It was super dope that they I did know. that fucking that old school track finally got performed live at the know. gathering. When my homie told me that, I was so pissed. <laughs> I was like, God damn it. <laughs> well, I'll go ahead and I'll slide in. My number four spot is also Forgotten Freshness 1 and 2. You got to see some of the bigger names that they were possibly going to be able to work with courtesy of when they were when they were with hollywood and and had access to that kind of those, those that kind of potential and um yeah it was just again like we were saying it was it was real experimental and you've seen uh, some of the tracks i don't know why they didn't make the cut honestly because they were really really like you said juggalo classics yeah that era for sure like, they had so many good songs in that era they just couldn't fit them on the joker card like there was a time limit on on cds back then is the only th reason i could think of some of those songs don't get put on cards like how did mental warp not fucking get put on riddle box yeah yep. yeah she's crazy put that shit right after 12 and it'd be fucking perfect i'll go up to my four spot I mean, three spots. Or, no, I'm moving up to my three spot. Man, and it's we're, getting, been... we're getting we're getting all fucked up today. <laughs> none of us can, none of none of us can count straight up that's, getting, that's why I, contact I, from Jew over there. <laughs> that's why we combine bizarre bizarre into two because we didn't want to have eight different bizarres to get confused on speaking of bizarre it's my three spot come on and welcome my curious sisters and brothers first put a 20 in the jar with the others that's right take a seat ain't no smoking in here i need to keep my ball clear the spirits in there what's your future someone gonna shoot ya will you get your girlfriend back as if i know that i can only tell you where your soul is headed and we'll be mainly turtly embedded the rest forget it life is nothing but a test to clear did you have a heart while you were here and was it sincere you're still unraveling your future right now what kind of person are you bro oh boy well, there you go you control your own motherfucking destiny the big hype around bizarre when it came out was it fucking actually got on mtv like let's go all the way it was actually in rotation on mtv which was the first time that anything by the clowns had ever been put on MTV. And that was huge in the juggalo world. Like I remember waiting up 
trying to fucking get the video for it, trying to wait with the, you know, the VCR fucking remote waiting for it to come on. So I can hit record and there's still a juggalo that uploaded it on YouTube where you could see it with the spanky new like logo from MTV at the bottom of it to prove that it was on MTV. That's what I remember about that era. Other than what we already talked about previously. Uh-huh. Uh, so my number three already been talked about as well, man. Got forgotten freshness. One and two. First ICP album I bought that was new since I've been down. It's dropped in 1998. The original Detroit version was only one disc, came out in 95, I believe, 96, somewhere around there. But yeah, man, just Joker card worthy songs are on this motherfucker. Like, hey, Vato, you know, Fast Woody Betty, which is meant for Riddle Box, Project Born, that graveyard shit is crazy, though, man. I love that shit. Yeah. Southwest Strangler, meant yeah. for the Shack the Clown album that never came out, man. Fucking. Yeah, you got the Christmas songs on here and shit. And like uh, Drew mentioned, that fucking Piggy Pie. Shaggy fucking body that verse, dog. Like, he killed that shit. I wish that was the original version. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? House of Wonders. House of Wonders is really fucking Oh, cool. House of Wonders is my favorite yeah. unreleased ICB song ever. That wasn't on yeah. all, like, major albums. But yeah, man. Found the Freshest, one and two. Fantastic. One number three. All right. Yeah, my number three has been talked about. I mean, we're kind of getting into that territory now. Is uh the terror wheel. Seeing shit out the corners of my eyes. Steady looking over my back. I didn't realize where I was going. I didn't want to bother anybody. Accidentally stepped down a dead body. Hey, motherfucker, why do the fuck you going? I might be dead. I'll kick your ass. Now I apologize, but he still had to talk shit. So I stepped over his face and kept walking. And here's the part of my story that gets really scary. Had to walk alone down military. I can see the crackheads hiding in the trees. Looking for some change, looking for some brains. Everything seemed too quiet as I walked down the block until I got hit with a rock. Up, my nanny girl was out of style And the crackheads took my money back in a dash And ripped off my arm in the process But fuck that shit, I still got another hand So I can still get the shit for my little man And I'ma walk with my nuts hanging out, I ain't scared But this is where it gets weird Factories, toxic waste and chemicals They have strange effects on the animals In my neighborhood and some get a lot bigger Like the giant rat Three and two are so close. Like before we even started recording, I was gonna flip them, but then I was like, uh, "No, I can't flip them." <laughs> but yeah, like the, I mean, we've talked about it. There's not very many songs on it, but like every song on here is fucking fire. I love Schizophrenic. Oh, that fuck song yeah. is so fucking dope. Uh, the smog, the smog is so fucking dope too. Uh, I stuck her with my Wang. Classic <laughs> ICP shit. <laughs> and then I will, I will never not snicker at that song, at that name. <laughs> I know. And then Amy's in the attic, bro. Certified classic. I mean, Absolutely. one of the best songs ICP have ever done, especially when you get down to the storytelling and like the terror in that fucking song. So dope. That's so classic. It mentioned it gets mentioned in other songs. It's so, Amy's in the attic. So good. Yeah. Yep, you're right. It does. It gets name dropped by uh, other artists as well. Amy's in the attic. Jacob's in the crawl space. <laughs> yeah. 
We got okay, your three uh, spots. You. My number three is uh, Beverly Kills. I got shot with a buckshot, shot me down, but you know you can't paint a frown on a clown. Sewer got her bladder runs through my system, best stop by, but I must have just missed them. Man, man, it's off by street gang. Do I bang, do I slang, do I let my motherfucking nuts hang? But do you care? I got stabbed in the eye and you wouldn't know where. And what about the time I got fucked when I got shot in the throat? But your news wasn't known that You could give a fuck less Never thought less unless Something happened in your suburb I'ma cut your daddy's neck you little fucking nerd I don't give a fuck where you're from boy So don't tell me cause I don't give a fuck It's all about what's going on in your head Do it don't you care About the 17 dead And as somebody who grew up during that era and was definitely not a popular kid, I motherfucking despised all the Beverly Hills kids. So just the <laughs> it was it was a perfect little picture for 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 the little the little hatred I had inside of me. So uh I, I won't go too far into it because we already already touched on it, but that's that, that that's that's my number three. Beverly, Beverly Hills, fucking phenomenal. Great cover too. Great, great, great. Oh, cover. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's my number two, so I'll go ahead and jump into the conversation. And like you said, like like you said, like you said, not liking the Beverly Kills or the Beverly I mean, Hills yeah, characters. I mean, if he's his number two, I might as well jump in and say it's my number two as well. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the uh, Beverly Hills 90210. That was big when I was in like middle school or whatever. And I could just picture Violent J sitting there hating all those Richie fucking dudes that were around all them hot chicks. <laughs> <laughs> and yep. writing this whole album about it, or at least the whole concept of the name and shit, and then putting the fucking CD like Mike showed. It was dope because they had two different ones. Like the repress was a, a, a different character. Like one's Dylan and one's Brandon. One's Brandon, mm-hmm. Yeah. So even like little just minor shit like that, Juggalos always dig. And like I already talked about uh, Within the High. That's one of my favorite ICP songs because of just how crazy Shags goes off in that fucking song. So I definitely had to have it on my list. Is at number two, like Luke. Yeah. Uh, for me, 17 Dead. Is like oh my god, so fucking good, and uh, the especially the end where they start free si- freestyling. <laughs> yeah, uh, name's Violent J, and I'm wicked. If they're a booger in my nose, I'm a pick. I'm a pick. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking dope. It's so fucking good. Um, in the high, like we already said, chop chop chop. Joke your mind. I got a story about joke your mind where I was like oh. in like I think I was in like middle school or some shit. I forgot. I think I told this story before, but I'll tell it again. And like, we had to write a poem to a song, and I was like, "Oh fuck!" I was like, "I only listened to ICP at that time." <laughs> like, we had to play the song behind us, and I'm like, "What the fuck am I gonna? What 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 the fuck can I pick?" And then I realized, "Joke your mind." There's no cussing at all. There's no swears in "Joke your mind" at all. Yep. So I was like, "All right, cool." So I think I wrote a poem about a dude that's like contemplating. <laughs> it's funny because I was in like fifth or sixth grade contemplating. He's like on a death row and he's like contemplating his death and shit like that. <laughs> that's dope. It, it, but for when I put it on, I told the teacher, I was like, insane clown posse, joke your mind. He's like, <laughs> and I'm like, don't worry. There's no cussing or nothing like that. <laughs> Kudos to little ass you for getting that one over. <laughs> I know. I was able to squeeze that one in there. Did you do a school project about 12 or something, too? Uh, no, but I did um, Old Evil Eye. Old Evil Eye, that's what it was. Evil. That's what it was. Fuck, that's sick. Oh, yeah. that's, we'll have to talk about that at a later date. That's sick, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I mean, it's fucking dope, so. Joke Your like, Mind's still getting brought up in the new fucking era. Yum, yum. Had a mm-hmm. Joke Your Mind reference on it. Yeah, it did. Yep. So what? What's your number two, Mike? Yep. Number two. All right, we're gonna already mentioned we're going to two thousand. I figured I'll stunt and show the motherfucking Hollow Wicked versions. Ooh. We got uh, Bizarre Bizarre man. Welcome to the Dark Carnival. <laughs>
You know, um, came out the same day as Twisted Freak showed. I, I got him the same day. That was fucking like Juggalo Christmas, like Brandon said. You know, everything's on here that is amazing. Like, um, my homie's baby's mama, fucking, uh, <laughs> please don't hate me. Yeah. Yeah, whatever that was. Uh, please take don't me hate away. me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that fucking you know, thug, bro. That's so good. Take me away. <laughs> Uh, uh man, it's kind of hard to read the track list. It's all fucking like circular yeah, like that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. You can get yeah. the gist. I ain't gotta mention it. One thing I want to say: this ain't a fucking like package review, but these fucking booklets are to die for, yo. It's a I miss how is. dope booklets used to be. Look at that. Yeah. Incredible, yo. The retail version has all these pictures, but they're, they're tiny as fuck. Oh, the wounds heal, but the scars remain. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> I, saw, I saw that fucking picture that hurt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. I, I will say, I will say like, record. the Yum Yum booklet isn't too bad either. Like, they put the go. lyrics in there. They put the lyrics in there. Oh, is, shit. Like, That's dope. To me. I was like, damn, bro, you guys stepped it up for this one. They made the booklet so goddamn big, you can't even close the fucking CD, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, that fucking <laughs> ad book. Terrible yeah. fucking packaging, man. It's fucking. Uh, I mean, uh, this shit right I, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They put a they put a whole extra ad book in there. Yeah, it's fucking whack. It's, but you know, hey, that's something we didn't mention about Bizarre Bizarre is oh. that they came with 3D glasses and like dice that you like took out. Yeah, and, like, it did. Shit. I should have put out so the retail fire. versions. Yeah, that shit was dope. There was, ru- there was there was rumors of a big version of that game coming out. There was like there was a game inside of those inside of the book, and there was rumors of a big version coming out on Dark Carnival Games, but I don't think it's ever came out yet. And the Pendulum's yeah. Promise is one of my favorite songs of all time. Swing low. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's it's like like, like, we, like we said before we started. It's, it's the some of the bleakest shit they've ever written. Yeah. Fucking amazing, bro. All right, my number two, and it has a caveat because it came with something. I have to pick the pendulum. Ferris wheels and bumper cars are fun, but those rides just aren't for everyone. But my ticket, I'ma have a run in the maze. If I don't come back, I'll ride away. Give me time, at least a half a day. Don't just leave me lost and thrown away in the maze. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jeff Nepple. And I'm Jimbo Jism. Welcome to the Dark Carnival's Amazing Maze. Over 5,000 ways to get in and no way out. Let's meet today's volunteer. This is Rick. We like to call him Rick the Dick. Dick Face here is a wealthy entrepreneur who smacks his wife around and buys his way in and out of everything. Let's see how Mr. Tough Guy fares up in the Amazing Maze. What up, bitch? I'm Volunteer. I'll be a guy for the day. Day? Good. Got mad doors and mad floors. Hallways, carways, walls for days. Make a left just before you make your right. And your left should be to your right if your left's right. Right? Good. Begin the show. Go on ahead, boy, and open up the first door. Uh. Welcome to a theatrical thriller. Me, Jack Doobie, a serial killer with a chainsaw. He thinks your arm at the elbow. You get it back if you make it out. Collecting the comics was so fucking fresh, and then to get these fucking tracks that came with it, fucking, uh, I will state this right now, uh, 50 Bucks is my favorite ICP song, it is one of the best they've ever written, um, you got, uh, again, you have, uh, the fucking, uh, it, it was, it was originally supposed to be technically a Dark Lotus track, but it's, uh, uh, fucking, I don't, I don't care. care, there you go, so, so fucking hard. Uh, it just, What's the main event on Raw? <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? He, he says, they say you'll never walk again. Well, plug the Sega in. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and again, it was so fresh because it came with those dope-ass fucking comics, too. So that, that always holds such a, a special place in my heart uh, for if we're talking non-Jokers cards. Who want to flex with this killer? And, 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 and fucking Toxic Love might be the grossest song that they've ever fucking done. <laughs> I love Ma- that fucking song. Amazing Maze is fucking classic ICP sounding. Yo. Mm-hmm. 
like again, again, not a bad, not a bad album on on the whole, or a bad track on the whole. And and again, to get a, an a, the whole album, you had to you had to piece it together. But it was it was worth it if you did it. Yeah, yeah, that was shit. That was dope. I was always in the comics, so like that was cool when they started coming like, out with those comics and shit. Like likewise, yeah. that shit was dope. The thing is, Chaos would always miss the release date. Said I'd go to my comic shop, they wouldn't have them yet, yeah. and then I'd come back like the next week. And then no, I got them on a fucking. I got them three days ago, and they sold out. So like, they're fuck. all gone. Every yeah. straight fucking up. one of them. Straight up. Move it up to my one spot. Already been talked about numerous times. Forgotten freshness, volumes one and volumes two. <laughs> into Malenko era after shockumentary and this was the first one it released and I was like damn if this shit is the stuff that didn't make the albums then then this bad is really fucking dope because I like every single track on this fucking album first time I'd ever heard the, the Hollow Wicked tracks people forget about it in the streaming age like how big this album was to have like everybody had always heard that they gave away they always like heard rumor that they gave away fucking Hollow Wicked tracks, but you didn't ever hear them in 98. You didn't 97 unless you had a fucking computer and I didn't. So yep. like getting this is the first time I'd heard that. I didn't have a ton of love triple X. So I hadn't heard uh, mental warp. I hadn't heard any of the unreleased shit. So this, this was two albums that were pretty much flawless to me and I'm Shaggy's always been my favorite. And this is the most heavily Shaggy two dope influenced album in their entire catalog in my opinion i think it's the only one that there's more of shaggy than there is of jay and shaggy's always been that dude that just stands out and so i connected to a lot of those mental wars one of my favorite icp songs of all time it went uh gold like they actually went gold with this album it's the only non-joker card to uh go gold or platinum so a lot of juggalos was feeling it and i put it at my one spot like i was saying first one that came out when i was down so i, I hold it very near and dear to my heart I don't know if Jew's privy to it, but I run a show called UFCD on Studio 17. Uh, me and my homeboy, Siznak, we battle albums. And out of all Joker's cards, that won the whole tournament. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it goes to tell you how good that album is. Yep, straight up. All right, number one for me, already been talked about. Make sure I cover the dick piece. Tunnel of Love. <laughs> as well 
fucking masterpiece. My favorite sideshow, 1996. You got Strong Queen on here, Con Candy, Stomp is the shit. Oh, oh yeah. That. When I get out, and this is the joint with a mental warp on here, the X-rated version, you know, classic yeah. shit. Motherfucking love. This is the first tape I heard along with Great Malenko in 97. My boy Steve, let me borrow it after I seen him on ECW, Hawk of Heaven. But uh, yeah, man, flawless. Love it. Best yeah. thing they ever did. That's not fucking joke. It's got in my personal opinion. Ton of love. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. My number one. Oh, wow. well, fucking Ninja. Ninja, I think, is like my top three what? ICP songs of all time. I fucking love that song. And then they got fucking My Kind of Bitch. It's oh, a bit, my God. Ninja's a bit Ninja's a bit underrated. A lot of people don't talk about that one enough anymore. I talk about yeah. it a lot, bro. <laughs> I think I brought it up. I brought it up multiple times on here because I fucking love that song, bro. And I, yeah. I, I grew up a fan of all them Shaw's brothers, Kung Fu Flicks. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I, I love that shit, dog. Like, great song. I'd also like to ask one question: Does anybody ever wonder where they compiled all those fucking porn clips from? It's got to be from, like. You gotta, ask, you gotta ask Mikey Clark. <laughs> My, Mikey Mikey Clark said they're old like porno records. They're not porno yeah. movies. They're just fucking LPs that he had. Like it's it, I, they've got some they they got some certain name they're called, but they're literally just fucking records of like basically recordings of porno. That's oh, what they shit. pulled them all from. And then the, for God. the pictures for the pictures they just went to the local newsstand and grabbed something, and cut that shit out. They were talking about that with Fat Sweaty Betty on the uh, Patreon thing. They were like, we just went and found the fucking porno magazine that was like fat chick fetish and cut out a fat chick and put her on the cover. <laughs> oh, that's that's some DIY shit, guys. So <laughs> and, funny. The, and this was before like, you know, pick art and all that shit where you do it on your phone. They're going to Kinko's and doing that shit, taping it to a piece of paper and copying it at Kinko's. <laughs> Bro, I remember I, did, oh, yeah, I used to do that shit with like uh, punk rock. I mean, to make punk rock flyers to promote shows. We did that exact thing. We cut shit out, fucking, you know, tape it on there and then fucking go to Kinko's and print them all out, man. Kinko's used to be your best friend back in the back in them days. Yeah. They're on record saying they dated bitches from Kinko so they could get them free Kinko print key cards and shit. Yo. <laughs> That's how important Kinko's was back in the day. <laughs> all right, you. I know it's you. You're next. No, I, you're, you're next. Tunnel of, love. Tunnel of love, man. Oh, Tunnel of Love is your number one. Okay, mine. All right. Uh, I We've already talked about it a few times, a few times, but I'm a god. Bizarre, bizarre is. My favorite non Joker's card uh, album. And boogers all up under his whiskey nose The motherfucker's ass is probably molded shut <laughs> Bet he's got tadpoles living out of his butt I fucking don't understand these people No kind of class Somebody needs to beat the ass I wanna tell him get the fuck off my block I wanna be a station with a rock He ain't good for shit But bringing our property down Dragging his funky ass around Troop sweats, hands dried up and cracked like the Sahara Wanting everyone's affection Wait a minute, that's me, I'm looking at my own reflection Swing down, swing down, swing down I bet she fucks people in my own bed He 
Where's my slippers where she's giving them head no doubt Look what I do, I get away with it What the fuck makes me think that she ain't never did it? Last time I beat her ass wasn't shit Fat lips ain't nothing This time I'm bringing something She's gonna learn not to give me any hassle I'm the king, I make the money I work in White Castle Fucking what and fearless are some of the oh, best man. written lyrically tracks the, uh, of of ICP. Uh, and again, we talked about Pendulum's Promise, but we you can also talk about uh, fucking oh, what is the name of it? Crystal Balls. Yes, Crystal Fucking Ball. That is uh, as far as like you know, they got the happy tracks and the uplifting. That guitar in the background when it breaks down, dude, it makes you just want to jump up and down when it when it comes back in. And I have before while listening to it. <laughs> it's got that rain in the background and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that, perfect... that, that, bitch, that bitch starts hitting in the background. Rain. Yeah, down, straight up. Down. Down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking all, all time classic. And uh, I can honestly go as far as to say it might even be my favorite ICP album. It might even surpass Joker's cards. It was mm. it was so well written to, to to know in my heart that's supposed to be filler. I'm like, why the fuck weren't you guys making filler your whole career? <laughs> yeah, their filler is uh, number one on my list and your list. Forgotten <laughs> Freshness was basically shit that didn't make it. Yeah. filler so they just threw it out there and it's it's i like forgotten freshness volume one and two better than a lot of joker cards too so well it, it just seems like anytime they're allowed to really step outside of the box they built for them fucking selves and just show their real artistic talent they can be so fucking good it's funny that you mentions uh Fearless, I love that shit. <laughs> Nigga said I throw gang signs at the Booyah tribe. I'm yeah. down like, what? I'm down like, what? <laughs> Those are big ass Samoan blood dudes. You know what I'm saying? I love that shit. <laughs> what's what's the opening track on the one that has uh fearless and what? Uh it's the track they use in the background for the menu on Big Money Hustlers. Live take, forever, live take forever. Me away. Take me away. There you go. That is also another one of my favorite all time ICP oh, yeah. songs. Yep. That's, that's just when I look back at the bazaars, I see so many tracks, and I'm like, "Well, that's one of my favorite songs ever. That's one of my favorite songs ever." And, and it, it's it's never a bad time to listen to it. I, I could put it on any time of the day and still love it. All this yeah. time later, "Take Me Away" is one of those songs where, like, I maybe I haven't heard Bizarre for like months, and then I'll get I'll start thinking of "Take Me Away," and I'm like, "Man, I gotta fucking go back and listen to that shit again, bro." What what a way to start a fucking album. Yeah, one that doesn't get played live very often either. That's why I marked out whenever they played it at the uh, Bizarre Bizarre Medley show. They opened with Tavia Away, closed with Crystal Ball. I was like, whatever they play in between that, I'm good with as long as they played in two tracks because you never get to hear that shit live. And they did, so I was fucking super hyped to see that shit. Yeah, man. So yeah, Bizarre Bizarre number one, number one for me. I I I have to say that. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with all the albums we picked. I wouldn't be mad if anybody had any of these albums at their number one. Like, no, they, 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 they all could be. They, they, yeah. they all really could be. They're all all time classics. Yeah. And again, not even fucking major album releases for some of them. Yeah, it's it was interesting to think about too because you you think about ICP. What's the best ICP shit? You immediately think Joker cards, and this this was off limits. Joker cards, where so it it really made you look at the rest of the catalog, and the the rest of the catalog is so fucking good. There's a reason why we're all still doing this in our fucking thirties and forties, y'all. It's because <laughs> it's good shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think we're all on record saying I don't think there was a bad song made by ICP in in the nineties. Like, find me a bad song in the nineties by ICP. <laughs> you gonna have, you gonna have a it. hard fucking time. Yeah, yeah it's none in my personal opinion, though. Yeah. It's crazy how good that, that shit was from back that in the day. Would be, that, that would be an interesting top five worst ICP songs. We we thought about that. We thought about that. Mexico City's on my list for sure. Can I can I please be invited to that? Please. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody else that we've mentioned it to is like, I don't want to put myself through that torture to have to listen to this. Like even Luke, he's like, I don't want to listen to fucking Miss Marvelous Missing Links. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. White suit, okay. They're gonna be on yeah. that motherfucker. I will, I will, I will suffer through it for the sake of humor because this sounds like it would be fucking hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Clown on him a little bit, I guess. You know, 
Hey, they they came out on their Patreon and said the Grump was like the worst shit they ever recorded, and they apologized for putting it out so they could make fun of their says. I mean, you could tell how much fucking love we give these motherfuckers. It's not like we're hating on them. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, it's, all, it's, all, it's hate, on my skin. They hate on each. They hate on each other. We could hate on them. They can hate on us. That's fucking just how the juggle of mentality is, man. You keep it real with. You keep it real with them. If you don't want to be one of them people that says everything is good. Then they, if you're telling them that on everything, they know you're lying because they know everything ain't fucking good. <laughs> yeah, I've been bubbling in since I was 12 years old. I'm 35 now, dog. Like, come on. Like, yeah. You ain't you ain't been you ain't been flawless the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I just I, I feel like we as a culture, we sometimes we take this shit a bit too seriously, and sometimes it is good to just sit back and laugh at it. Makes it yeah, easier. Yeah. Before we get out of here, we always do honorable mentions. And before we get into those, we kind of had like rules. If a couple if people were like, "Why the fuck ain't uh, Tales from the Lotus Pod on here? Why the fuck yeah. ain't dumping on here?" No Lotus, that's not was, ICP album. Yeah, yeah no, no Lotus was allowed. No Riders were allowed, and no solo albums were allowed because you know Jay and Shaggy solo albums aren't fucking ICP, and it, that doesn't really fit into this category of non joker card kept everything it was kind of like icp related so i wanted to get those mentioned because fuck the fuck off motherfucker and wizard of the hood would have been on my list for sure if those were on there if they were eligible how could we not have f- uh, fucking wizard of the hood like five to five different times yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> so, <laughs> the whole album just it would be, yeah, just be the whole album so it could be played in full <laughs> another one that uh didn't qualify because it's not all icp that but i really fucking dig in a newer Fucking albums, Killjoy Club. Oh yeah. they did with Three Six oh, Mafia. Yeah. I love, God. I love that shit, man. That was, that was my shit. As soon as I heard, it, I immediately liked. It. I've been a fan of Three Six Mafia as long as I've been a fan of ICP. So yeah. to see yeah. those two fucking yeah. groups collaborate, man, it was fucking sweet. And, and Three Six Mafia always gave ICP love. They put them on their fucking album, which yeah. Tech Nine has yep. never done to this day. Take notes, Tech Nine. They put them on their fucking album and fucking rocking the Jekyll Brothers shirt in their music videos. Yeah. Like they yeah, always yeah. showed so much love. That that made Triple me like support Triple them Triple so much more. Give us all kinds of love back in the day they yeah. i mean dj paul still does he's he's at a lot of juggalo events i fucking worship three six mafia i've been down since you 97 when i first heard him uh, world uh chapter two world domination yo mystic styles oh classic 95 shit nigga like straight up uh, live by your rep in, in parentheses bone this like <laughs> straight up <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, if you look at that, that was three six almost doing horrorcore. If you yeah. really look yeah. at that shit, uh, I think yeah. that's I think that's why there's so many juggalos that fucked with three six, and I think they knew that, and that's why they put them on that album. Another cra- they put that uh, song, another crazy click on when the smoke yeah. clears, because they yeah. knew there was a lot of juggalos fucking with them. Putting that track on there, it's probably sold another fifty thousand copies. There were so many juggalos back in the day that bought anything that had ICP on it. Yeah, well, yeah, we, yeah, we did, too. man. We yeah, did. on Freak Show, on Freak Show, man. Yeah, that was that. I like that one better than uh, another crazy click. Gangsta Boo, I popped the Zan. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think that's the first time I ever heard uh, anybody kill it. Was that track? Oh, he bodied that shit. Mm-hmm. Bloody Sue. Everybody schooled that shit, man. The last one on my honorable mentions list, just because it doesn't get a lot of love, and I actually do dig the album, is Tempest. I know a lot of people don't dig it. I didn't dig it when I first heard it. It took me about probably two years of not even thinking about listening to that album. And then uh, before I was going to the gathering, I just put it on because I knew they would probably play some songs for it. No, no, it was uh, seeing Hatchet Attacks, and if I was a serial killer, and I was like, damn, I don't remember any song being this good on that entire album. And that was because it was, it was the last track, and I didn't make it to, to it in the initial <laughs> listen. <laughs> if I was a serial so killer, caught me, off. If, if I, I was a serial killer caught me off guard because I didn't love it till I heard it live. That, that's that's what it was at Hatchet Attacks. I said that shit was live, and I was like, "Damn, I don't remember any song fucking being that good on that album." Where the fuck did I miss this song? At? And it's because I didn't make it that far in the album. But now, once I like listen to it, it's it's good in the in the in like kind of the same way we were saying a lot of our picks on this top five was good. It's so different from everything else. Like it don't sound like anything ICP's ever done. You really got to like ICP to like that album. Like you got to be almost tired of listening to like uh, Riddle Box and Malenko. To, to pick Tempest over listening to the Riddle Box or Maliko. <laughs> but if, if you're if you're at that point and you just want some new shit from ICP you never heard, I think it's a pretty decent album. It gets hated on a lot. Mikey Clark was back for the first time. He didn't produce in the studio with him, but he made the beat. So that was also another reason I kind of, I guess, hold a little bit of shine on that album. It was the first step in getting Mikey Clark back. I think Anybody you like, else? Inadvertently brought up a point there that I'd never really thought about before. 
is that like I don't know about you guys, but my listening habits have changed like drastically since way back then. Or like back then, man, I could listen to Malenko on loop all fucking day, four yep. fucking seven. But now, I I don't know what it is, but I just can't do it anymore. Like honestly, my only survival is hitting random on my Spotify. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like I don't know if it's because we have so much music at our fingertips, like we did back then. But like, and so like when you were listening to shit back then, it was like if something was kind of whack, you just didn't fucking listen to it at all, and because you, you're like, oh, I could have Malenko in there. Or I could have bring or anything else. So, Why like, am I not listening to Tales from the Lotus Pod? Why am I yes. listening to this shit? Yes. <laughs> the greatest album Psychopathic ever did, in my opinion. OG Tales of Mars on it, though. Like, I actually bought I actually bought a copy from the homie Joe Christie when he was doing his fucking uh album liquidation sale. I was like, yeah. I can't pass it up. I haven't had this album since I was like 16. Snatch. Uh, bought. Yeah. Hatchet so Rising that's... Troll Dog. Mm-hmm. The greatest tour ever. My personal opinion. Yeah. Yeah, so to anybody who was wondering, that's why that shit wasn't on our list because we said none of that shit because it would just yeah, be us yeah. talking about DL for fucking an hour. Yeah. <laughs> anybody got, else got any honorable mentions they want to mention? Yeah. Uh, um, House of Wax. I, I got to listen to that again. I, I barely remember that. That came with the box set. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got to go to 2015. The best thing they did that year, the Phantom EP, the Spooky mm-hmm. Edition. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that. Yeah, yeah. They, they handed that out at the gathering, I do believe, didn't they? Give it away for free. Yeah, a little sampler, but then they released a, an extra joint where it had like the fucking little family on the cover. Yeah, the extra spooky edition. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. I think probably seventy five percent of Juggalos that I've heard mention it say they like that album better than either of the Missing Link albums. I do. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, hands down. Not even a competition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think all mine were mentioned. Phantoms. Uh, uh, Forgotten Freshness, probably three would be in there as well. Oh, yeah, likewise. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I would have... Well, the other thing we didn't include was Psychopathics from Outer Space. I love that record. We didn't, volume you know. two, vo- volume, volume one and two are, are uh, the, the, the label at its finest. If, if you are a fan of Juggalo music and you don't know about those, go back. Just, just go back. It's, it's really easy to find. It's funny. I can't remember what song it is, but I think it's Madrox. And it's like, I can't remember what song it is, but it's basically him just trying to get pussy. And it's called... He Old has School that, Pervert? Old yes. School Pervert. Yeah. Actually, actually, <laughs> that song actually got one of my friends to start listening to ICP and all that shit. <laughs> I don't know why. So like, I made him like a whole mix CD of all this shit and everything. It was so fun. I don't know why that song caught his ear, but it fucking did. The pinnacle of Juggalettes being the baddest bitches ever was during that time frame. And like, they weren't stuck up, you know? The first thing I always think about with Psychopathics from Outer Space 1 is I finally got to own the dirt ball. I love that fucking song. And I had the only way that I could listen to it was de- like fucking letting it load on fucking web TV for 15 minutes and getting that hear like oh. half of it before it faded out because I never could find it in those fucking AP magazines. Like I, I looked like a motherfucker trying to find that shit in the AP magazines and, ne- and wasn't able to find it. So mm. it was super dope that it was on that shit. Heavy Metal 2000 soundtrack because I'm a big Pantera fan and it had that fucking uh, Mortally Insane on there. So that's how you got dirt ball too. So oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember those on the old Angel Fire fucking collection list, Heavy Metal <laughs> and uh, Great White Hope or Great White Hype. Jump through yeah. all kinds of hoops to get anything that they had their name on. <laughs> Likewise, yeah. if, if ICP farted at the cover, we'd be like, "We'll buy that." <laughs> you know, and that's something that some motherfuckers, you know, are jealous about that we have that lineage. You know what I'm saying? Well, it wasn't. It wasn't like it was everywhere. It wasn't at your fingertips. If you wanted to hear Murder Cloak, you had to have a homie who a homie who a homie who was there. Yeah. Life is so cold. <laughs> so cold. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it, it, there's some of that freshness that like y'all can't relive. Mm-hmm. Fuck, we're lucky we remember it. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, you know, me, Jew, and Brandon. You know, definitely some potheads in this motherfucker. So, <laughs> you know. I always forget Luke don't smoke. Yeah. <laughs> I got to get always him forget that. Him, no, it's gonna happen. I'm going to give him edibles and he ain't going to know it. That's what's going to happen. I, I don't have a choice. <laughs> oh, before we get out of here, before we get out of here, I want to get you back to uh, let everybody know where to check uh, Pixar didn't happen. 
uh, you know, we're doing some find, big interviews and shit. You can find us on uh, YouTube at Pixar. It didn't happen. You can find us on Facebook if anybody still fucking uses that. At Pixar. It didn't happen. You can find us on Instagram at Pixar. It didn't happen. Official because we had to have because somebody had our fucking name. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if 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 you like to hear underground podcasts, that's just that's just what we do, man. We interview. Uh, underground uh, artists of all kinds, not just your big favorite names. We talk to pretty much any fucking body, and that's also one of our mottos. We will talk to any fucking body. Oh, yeah, definitely check that out whenever it drops over there on the uh, Pixar It Didn't Happen channel on YouTube. Until next time, next Thursday, we're going to peer pressure Luke into getting high with us, but we'll see you next Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Fago Lovers Network. This is Five Piece. We out. Bad influences. Thank <laughs> you.